After several years of making this 40-foot sailboat in Esperado more or less livable, surviving several small hurricanes, COVID, and other mishaps, we spent the last year installing an old diesel engine, and we are not much closer to setting sail with auxiliary power. Last video, you may have seen that we didn't manage to get the shaft aligned with the engine despite trying several different methods, including the proper procedure of adjusting the mounts, and a creative endeavor of constructing wedges to lift the engine slightly up. None of this worked to get it aligned in the end. So right away I scrounged up $150 for an outboard bracket that would hold the most weight as possible, and we began the search for a temporary outboard motor to get this boat to the boatyard. I measured from the inside and the outside to make sure that the bracket would be installed as close to the water as possible. Quickly, it became clear that this task wasn't going to be as easy as just bolting the bracket on, though. We would need to construct a wedge to correct the angle in which the outboard would sit. So up to the taillère, and it was up to Robbie to make a wedge this time. We used some chisels just to chisel a rough edge on this thing here. And now we're going to send it as the final piece of the failure. That was even more time consuming. The only issue by using a chisel is I think one of the st strips of wood kind of slipped a, a little bit deep there in the line, so we'll have to see. With the wedge completed, now I could begin to drill the holes for the outboard bracket. I started with one hole in one corner of the drawn outline. It was quite difficult to screw the bolt on, and it was only later on that I figured out that bolt holes do not have to be as snug as screw holes but this actually worked out in my favor to drill out the remaining holes, as I could not position the drill properly unless I moved the bracket out of the way. With the dry fit of the bracket complete, we knew that this setup would not stay dry for very long, and we decided to paint a generous amount of epoxy onto the wedge. When your cheap wood piece soaks in the epoxy like a sponge, that's when you know you really needed to do it. This porous wood would not last more than several days in the sun and the salt water. Even after spending some time to really widen those holes, the bracket and the wedge were still a challenge to fit on. But for once, something actually worked. Now it was just a matter of tightening the bracket on. Yep, there's a washer on everyone. And I have the the nuts that are on them are the lock nuts, yeah. Nylock, sure. We finally tracked down a 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard engine provided to us by our friend and Sailorama patron. The four-stroke 9.9 .9 was just enough weight to necessitate the use of a halyard to lower it onto the bracket. Honestly, it's not a lot of power to propel a 40-foot sailboat, but I was happy to try something rather than nothing. Is that the lowest you could have put the bracket? Yep. We could have put it a centimeter lower, but like no more. However, we could not get this dang engine that was previously working to start, despite attempting to bypass the start button, which was broken off. 
Oh well, time to move on to the rigging. To triple check that everything was in order because this would be our only form of propulsion to get to the boatyard now. Robbie really wanted to make sure that the spreader tips were solidly in place. Because just like our previous sailboat named Rosa used to have, Inesperado has a spreader tip corrosion issue. We attached him to two halyards and sent him up. What are you hammering the mast about? Trying to level the spreaders more or less same. Just in time for Robbie to be up the mast, menacing grey clouds started rolling in. He drilled a couple of holes, threaded through, and tied off the ends with metal fishing wire. We got him down again, just in time for the rain clouds to roll out. A heart-wrenching task to take care of before leaving this spot was the removal of the bird nest located on our anchor roller. We haven't used our anchor roller in so long that these social flycatchers sneakily set up their home right above the water there. In anticipation of the move, I sewed up a small hammock to relocate their nest as close as possible to the original spot. The birds like the protection that they get from our ever-watchful choco. To our dismay, there were tiny chicks in the nest, so small that it would be impossible to hand feed them if this didn't go well. Okay, let's go. Something I also do not like doing other than unwillingly destroying bird families is jumping into murky, brackish water. And the water was especially murky today. Don't forget to wear gloves, any sort of gloves, to help protect from the sneaky barnacles on the hull. In the brackish water, barnacles are only located several meters down, where the water remains more salty, while at the top, it's mostly fresh. The rest of the hull was a slimy green after several months in this spot. These brushes do nothing. The heavy duty and the normal paint scrapers worked really well. And then I went for the heavy-duty scouring pad to get the rest of the slime off. As you may have noticed, we have no more bottom paint. It's been a very long time since the boat has been hauled out. Some last minute small items to check off the list, such as sewing up some pouches so that electronics and chargers 
do not go flying across the cabin under sail. Stay tuned for next video, where we finally leave the canal. Thank you to our viewers and supporters. Until next time!